Welcome, everybody. Welcome, We've, everybody. We've got our ice cameraman, Manny, here as usual. Full yeah. production. We missed last week because everybody was on the turf standing yelling out. Well, we missed it. We've missed it. <laughs> Admittedly, we've missed a couple of weeks. Yeah, I've been a bit slack. Yeah. Uh, we, well, I've been away. We've been away as a team down south, but uh, it's all good. It's all good. So, Talisker Storm, You've had, we've had Talisker's on here no, before. I like Talisker, uh, one of my favourites actually. It's, like it's such a nice uh, drinking whiskey. It's very, um, you know, it's it's a bit peaty, but not too much. It's not like those Octomores we were drinking, no, or a Lagavulin, or a... Don't get too peaty for yeah. me. Well, they're super, super peaty. They're very much an acquired taste. They're a one a one sort of drink. You can't just knock a few of those back, whilst yeah. this one is very, very, um, very, very easy to drink and very nice. Well, all the Talisker's are. The Talisker 10 is probably the most popular, but this one is... Um, Did you buy this one or should we give it to No, this was a gift. This was from uh, from Darren at Adapted Digital. Actually. Oh, okay. Nice one. So, yeah, yeah. Thanks for that, Darren. Um, but so, some information about Talisker, right? So, what I didn't know is that Talisker, I don't know if it still is, but for like a hundred years was the only distillery in the Isle of Skye in that, in that section. And it started in 1830. That's what it says on the top. Established in 1830. Uh, and it was the only one. Now this region um, is very sort of peaty. It's very ocean-like, so yeah. it's supposed to be salty and sort of peaty and briny almost, yeah. um, which is actually quite similar to uh, to Springbank. So Springbank, okay. which is a Campbell town, but similar sort of characteristics. But uh, it's it's going to be super. Well, I'm going to say it is super nice because I've already uh, I've already done it yeah. yesterday. <coughs> and Did you have one with Jace? Did you? On Wednesday, yeah. And so. Yeah, so you can get that. It, it's very. You get the peat, but it's yeah. almost got like caramel or vanilla as well. Yeah, it's and fruity. Mm. Yeah, so super, super nice. Okay. Mm. Yeah, that's nice. Not too peaty. Not too peaty. What? It's got a bit of um. It's got a bit of kick to it, though. Yeah. Well, it is. It's got to be forty. It must be forty something percent. Really, forty, forty-five point eight percent. So we really need to get a drop of uh, a drop of water in there to sort of bring it down. This be um, this be the eighteen thirty vintage green bottle. This be the eighteen thirty vintage. Yeah, this is eighteen thirty vintage. We paid uh, four hundred and twelve thousand for this bottle, uh, but I, I think that with an eighteen thirty vintage, there'd be none left. It'd be, be evaporated out to the uh, yeah. to the um, yeah. We we'll just have a, a touch of touch of water in there. All right, so let's talk a little bit about what our plans are for 2019. Let's talk a little bit about what everybody should be doing in preparation for a new year. I mean, we always say, you know, at end of financial year, you should be planning. Yeah. You should be looking at the numbers for last year. But in reality, you should be doing that all the time. So for us, uh, January marks a big turning point for the business because we've got lots happening. We've got plenty um We've got plenty of new things going on and there's there's many changes happening, so. Well, we're gonna invest a bit in marketing and really get that up and running. Yeah. And so we need to do that. Well, what we, well I guess what we did, uh, which was actually a really important exercise when, when we all sat around, and were the four or five of us, Manny and Jason, you and I, and yeah. uh, I spoke to, to Kim about it as well for a little bit, and I'm catching up with him Monday too, is that we really spent a lot of time properly identifying who the, car, the target client or our ideal client is now because it's changed a lot over the last few well, years. When I started, it was just a small business bookkeeping. Yeah. We've gone a long way from that. Well, we're playing, much, we're playing a much bigger game now, and we've got uh, all of the new clients we've been bringing on are, are sort of of that, um, you know, bigger, uh, more ambitious, <coughs> more established, more... Look at our older ones, some of them have grown really well. Yeah. And, and so they've gone from a small entity to a big entity. Yeah, that, which is a good thing. Absolutely, right. absolutely. So, exactly. but it's sort of a, it's a testament to uh, to both the clients and us because yeah. you've got all of the clients that we no longer deal with anymore is because we've outgrown them. Yeah. And then so when you look at our clients that have grown that massively, it right. shows that yeah. we're absolutely able to keep up and bring yeah. on clients equal to that level. Yeah. It's one of the biggest problems I suppose that I see, and Manny, you agree with this as well, is that every complaint that we get from people about previous accounts is that they outgrew them. Yeah, that's right. Well, the, the client outgrew the, the accountant. Yeah. They said, we don't think they had enough knowledge to be able to keep up with our growth or our structure or our, okay. you know, and we needed more expertise. Well, well they're not giving the right advice. No. More importantly, what happened this week. Yeah. yeah. Well, absolutely. Yeah. So, you know. I'm <coughs> from a firm much bigger than us. 
But, yeah, absolutely. Probably they're much bigger than us. But see, size yeah. is not is not. You know, so it's not important. That's what Stormy Daniels said. <laughs> that's why. That's why I paused when I was saying that because I was like, if I say size is not important, it's indicating something about probably the business, but me. <laughs> hey, it's not. It's not. It's not. It's not, it's not the angle of the dangle. It's probably not. Well, the old, the old Stormy. The Stormy's given up trying to sue President Trump and gone back to doing porn. <laughs> She's obviously not very good at marketing. No, no, that's right. Exactly. Doesn't fit. Oh, dear me. So, yeah, big plans for next year. Well, I think we've, we've what's the old saying? We've uh, been a bit of a wandering generality this year instead of a meaningful specific, to use that old expression. Well, so we're going to get more specific next year about what we want, what we, who we approach, what our game plan is, uh, and our marketing plan. And people get mixed up between marketing and sales. They're very different, actually. Well, yeah, absolutely. And I think from us for the last year, I mean, we we executed on what we said we were going to execute on yeah. from the end of financial year until yeah. now, yeah. and which was very much about cash, very yeah. much about um, yeah. you know identifying any unnecessary expenses, about looking for ways to boost cash flow so we could probably and probably invest in the new offices yeah. and get the right you know infrastructure in place to improve Scotch O'Clock, to do more marketing, to get better production value and everything, which is all going to come next year, but. Cost a lot of money. Yeah. So without sort of being, I guess, the the wandering generality, yeah. which, which we kind of were from a marketing standpoint, yeah. from everything else we were. <coughs> um, um, this, we've always had good growth. <coughs> but we're going to be a bit more, probably a bit more picky about it hmm. and, and what that growth entails. I.e., it's not just where we came from, bookkeeping. We really need to get into the you know, advisory role. Hmm. Well, that's, where we, that's where I mean, we, our bookkeeping team is the best in the business. I have yeah, no doubt right. about that at all. There's no one out there that does it equal to or greater than us. Well, I got compliments from someone the other day about the girls. They're just doing a great job. Well, Manny's a guy. <laughs> yeah, Manny's yeah. <laughs> a guy. Yeah. But he's a big girl. <laughs> <laughs> but but you know, um, you know, Lauren particularly gets good compliments. Mm. You know, because she's obviously, she does a good job, yeah. you know. Or, or power tool to do it. Yeah, Absolutely. Good. You know, so there you go. Anyway, <clears throat> so that's our plan for next year, the city. But, the, but, but there's lots of other big things happening from an yeah. uh, exposure point of view, branding point of view, yeah. and uh, let's just say a fun point of view. Yeah. So everything that we discussed last week in order to access the clients we want to access to properly uh, help and assist with you know our current clients and help them network and all yeah. this sort of stuff. Our monthly lunches are going to be back. The yep. first one's next week, um, and then in the new year they'll be obviously much more structured and everything again. Yep. But you know, we, we, the aptly named Alderton Long Lunch is uh, is back for yep. yep. Friday <laughs> lunch once a month. Yep. Uh, we're going to be doing some golf days um, yep. and uh, things like that, which will be great for networking and all this sort of stuff. And obviously, Scotch Clock has had a full overhaul, yeah. And it's going to be, um, yeah, it's going to be. We've got to get. You know, we're going to get some more interesting guests on. Interesting guests. Not just our customers, but people from outside who've got something to contribute. Well, we're going to get to. And we came up with uh, some awesome gifts to give our yeah, guests yeah, yeah. when they come in, yeah. uh, which is super exciting. We've got, uh, at the moment, based on, we haven't ordered anything yet, but based on what we researched, we've got yeah. some cool uh, whiskey glasses and yeah. Glen cans, which are like these ones. Yeah. Um, and also a, a very specific Alderton edition blended scotch. Single or blended single malt whiskies yeah. that you can only get by coming on Scotch O'Clock. Right. <coughs> right. We've decided on the blend. We've picked what we want in terms of peak, what we want in this, what we want in that, and they're going to be. Well, actually, we should order some to yeah. make sure they are delicious before we are give one as a gift because otherwise they might be shit out. That's right. <laughs> you've got to be careful. I remember we did that years ago. Age you see, they ordered a whole heap of wine. Yeah, but they bought Christmas wine. Yeah, but, and, and it was actually garbage. But what we didn't know. It actually aged really well in the bottle, so like two years later, everybody put it in the cellar, and then we ate it. was bloody great. Oh, really? <laughs> but when we actually gave it away, it was crappy. <laughs> but it aged really well in the bottle. Well, I had the vintage back in those days. Uh, AGC really well. did? Yeah. Oh, AGC owned everything. Was this? Was AGC like the, the 1970s and 80s version of... You know, what, what's a movie where there's this one global corporation that runs the whole, <laughs> the whole world? <laughs> I had a, 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 a division called Special Projects, so we own... We own that's Batman. Yeah. Right, that's Batman's Research and Development Division. Yeah. Right, that's... Yeah. that's uh, <laughs> well, we own, we own Budget Rent-A-Car. 
Yeah. Making that his time. Jarvis Walker, the fishing rod maker. <coughs> yeah. Um, Aubrey Brickworks. There's a whole list of them at the mm. time. Corralman, I didn't like talking about Corralman because that went broke. That was a property development company up on the Gold Coast. <coughs> but they had a lot of stuff like that. And uh, they were very diversified. But then Jeff Carter, the CEOs, the CEOs, well, that's not really cool business. So they flicked it all off. But it, it's it's a, it's a good way, it, you know. It is a method of scaling, getting size, getting uh, market share, and getting access to a whole bunch of different consumers and different. Right. Uh, well, they, they, they had cash. That was yeah. the issue. They were, you know, a very wealthy company. So to go and write out a check for I don't know whatever five hundred million dollars or whatever it might have been for, for budget was yeah. a mission. Yeah, you know, it's, like, it's not like they had to raise money to do it. You know. The cash in the bank. So yeah, here we are in Australia, and everyone's in debt. <laughs> no one's got cash anymore, except no. for the seriously good people that are, are strategized properly and, yeah. and running good businesses. <coughs> yeah. Well, we we had some money in the bank this morning. Hey, we had some money. No, no, we're okay. <laughs> we're, we're okay. <laughs> I'm talking about general, um, uh, you know, general, the well, general everyday well, Australian. Well, and everyone says discretionary spending's down, the market's changing. The problem is, is that you know. Things turn to shit. Everyone uses credit cards, and then discretionary spending doesn't change. But they're spending more money on interest than they can afford on discretionary spending. So yeah. discretionary spending stops. Yeah. <laughs> right. Anyway, but, you know, some some businesses, but most of our businesses are doing pretty well at the moment. So yeah. it's not a problem. Getting back to where we're going next year, so we're going to keep focus on that. So we've got big plans. Big plans. Um, and look, we really just want to focus on on helping business, businesses grow. I think that's really just the ultimate aim. Um, I had an interesting conversation with um, with a, a, a friend of mine, I suppose, from Sydney, about um, you know we were really focusing on what does it kind of mean in your marketplace. Uh, and what well, is the best way to put this? Um, no, it's gone. Trying to thought this bit. Okay, this lost bit. Your word. Lost my word. Lost my word. Very well, I had a call from a client on the way here who's got some issues at the moment, and he said, you know. Should I sell? Should I stay? Or should I go? If I sell, I'm going to tear up for even money. I think you know what I'm referring to. Mm. And uh, so, so I, I just sort of hang in for the moment, mate, because it'll get better. You know, at least in that difficult situation where you know the building next door vacated and all sorts of things. Mm. So, so it'll come back. So you know, <coughs> bite the bullet and hang in, yeah. and it'll come good. Because if you, if you sell, they're going to tear up a truckload of money. We don't, yeah. want, we don't want to see that happen. He's no. a good guy, so um, it'll come good. Mm. It, 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 fortunately, he has got the asset base to, to withstand it. Yeah. Some people wouldn't. They, yeah. they, they just really be in the shit. Yeah. Um, no, I got it down. My, my thing is back. And we're talking about again about marketplaces, right? Uh, and so, you know, the question and the discussion was about what's, you know, he'd been from Sydney. He said, "What's Perth like?" I said, "Well." I said, it's a hard question to answer for me because I've always been very much of the mindset that there's always enough clients out there. Yeah. You just have to be either more aggressive, spend more money on marketing. You might chew out some margin, but yep. there's access to clients out there if you do the right marketing and, and go aggressively and get them. And uh, the response I got was, yeah, well, that's true. He said, but if there's a better marketplace, why the fuck aren't you there? <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, and I think that when you talk about AGC owning various businesses yep. in different industries, it's not necessarily about the, the geographic or the location okay. of, of the business. It's like, if you've got potential to expand into perhaps a more pro profitable industry at the current time or a more profitable area, then all of that stuff should be explored. I don't think that it's a case of, I've got one business, it's doing shit, um, you know, do I just sell, I'm not, I'm not a good business owner, I should sell and, and you know, cut my losses. It's about, okay, well, you know, if I leave that there and it's just breaking even or struggling and I either dabble in a different industry, invest some capital into something else or a different location or a different state or whatever, then everything's, like you said, everything's going to come back, right? As long as you've got a good model, right, and you're running the right business, you've got good systems, good procedures, and it's yeah. a legitimate business, it'll come good yeah. at some point. Um, I say that and not all will come good. Some industries get killed by technology or something. But if, if you're up to date, you're innovating, you're making sure that you're in front of yeah. all the time and you're still <clears throat> not quite getting there, then perhaps you just need to leave it for a little while and move and do something else at the same time. Well, technology is maybe a little bit of great disruptors like Uber, etc. You know, they're disruptors, but you've got to be prepared for that. The way technology moves, we're going to be looking ahead and saying, what's going to disrupt our business? We know already, basically. Mm. Compliance accounting's gone, mm. effectively. We know that. So we've got to do other things. We've got to be ahead of the game. That's all. That's really simple. We've got to be creative. And this, this stems into another to a seminar I went to uh, a couple of weeks ago. 
we talked about creativity, and this was one where the, the Duncan Wardle from, oh, yeah. from uh, the ex, uh, the, uh, the XVP or Director of Innovation and Creativity was, and it was just such an interesting. And the, the main thing about creativity, and you know, it was not every business needs creativity. It doesn't mean you have to be an artist. It doesn't mean you have to be a, a but an accounting practice has to be creative and innovate to be different, right? A, a bookstore has to do the same thing because they're battling Amazon, yep. right? Or you know, a blockbuster, a video rental store should have innovated, otherwise they were going to get chewed up by Netflix, right? This, these sort of conversations. <laughs> if you look at the blockbusters model, they meant that when that first started, it was based on, you know, of the old tapes, we call them. Yeah, yeah. And, and I remember Mike Tilly saying to me at the time, he said, I'll wait a on. He said, this, this won't last, it can't last. He said, because CDs are going to come out. They don't need the space anymore. Mm. So I needed all the space for the VHS things. Yeah. Since the CDs are going to come out, that, for a start, that'll kill it. Mm. And it's exactly what happened. Then, then Netflix arrived and Foxtel arrived and all that sort of stuff. But this is the thing yeah. is that Net, Netflix arrived in, Netflix started in the 90s. Yeah. I think it was, it was either the 90s or the early 2000s. I, I might may, may be wrong on that, but it started super early. And it's just blown up in the last five years, you know, or something like well, that. Well, probably, probably because of things like internet speed, etc., which become more available. Mm -hmm. Because before that time, when I go back to when we first got the internet, it was was you know, it was as slow as it'll get out. It's the same. With we, Facebook. we thought it was really neat, you know, but but yeah. Same with Facebook. Facebook took off in two thousand and eight, yep. seven two thousand seven two thousand and eight, yep. but it started in two thousand and three. Yeah. And it was just purely built for universities, right? And so it was just it was super slow and clunky, and it was well, yeah, university yeah. students networking together. Yeah, they built it for his mates, basically. Well, pretty much, yeah. At, at uni, I, I don't know the full story because I haven't actually seen the movie, but yeah. it's something like that. And well, that's, um, that's how email started. You know that? The email was started at the University of America for, for the professors to communicate between each other. Yeah, same thing, exactly the same thing. Then we thought, wow, this is a good idea. Mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's precisely what happened. That's how you know, penicillin was an accidental invention. You know, these things happen. Yeah, right. You know, and, and then they just take off. Right. You know? But there's definitely there's definitely things out there that are the uh, exceptions to the rule mm -hmm. that sort of happen by accident or yeah. you know just were not designed <coughs> for the purpose of you know, creating a billion dollar enterprise, but designed for the purpose that there was a need and the need was being addressed and invariably it then took off at some point shortly yeah. thereafter. Yeah. And uh, I think that's what we all got to try and aim yeah. for is yeah. adding a level of creativity to our business. And what he was saying was, is that no one is really creative at work. Because the question that we got asked in the seminar was, what was the last good idea you came up with for the business was, when did you, you know, when did you think of it, think of the idea, blah, blah, blah. And then he said, now, not where, but think exactly where you were physically, geographically, yeah. when you came yeah, up with this exactly. idea. And uh, in the room, there's about 200 people in the room, and 0% were at work. It's normally when you're going for a walk or early in the morning or something. Well, everyone's different, you know. It was, it was, you know, mine was at lunch. Yeah. Because this is where I, you know, because I need to be bouncing ideas. I'm not great at, at, at yeah. singularly myself coming up with an idea and going, all right, that's that's the one. I might have a, an idea, but it, all, it always needs two or three other people to make a contribution to it and eventually it evolves into something yeah. good. Yeah. Or it turns into some shit and we don't do it. But, you know, I don't think of that stuff <coughs> by myself. Well, um, like, uh, Mike Tilly used to tell me, he used to put a notebook beside his bed at night. Because he'd wake up, he'd think of something, wake up and he'd write it down because he said, otherwise I'll forget. Mm. So he'd wake up and think of an idea, or think of something I to do. He'd write it down. He'd never think about sleep. Mm. But you know, we're all we're all different. But this is this is a, like uh, the the story of where the penny drop came from. Yeah, that's right. right. Which is super interesting. And this is again, um, I haven't verified this, but it was what was told at the seminar. And apparently, it was from Thomas Edison. Okay? Now, Thomas Edison, who is obviously one of the greatest inventors of all time, if not the greatest inventor of all time, and, and Tesla, it, Tesla, Tesla. Tesla. Okay. Well, some he's in that level. Right, and I think, but number of inventions across a period of time, Thomas Edison is, is better than everybody. Now, he realized that he was the most creative asleep, or as he was falling asleep, yeah. when his mind started going crazy as he went into, into dreamland. Yeah. And so what he did was he went, okay, well, how do I make sure I capture all of those ideas as easy as possible and make sure that if there's a good one, I, I know about it and I don't forget it. So the story goes that he used to put a, an aluminium tray or a tin tray or whatever on the floor and he would put his feet on the tray and then he'd put a penny in between his knees and then he would fall asleep and what would happen is as he fell asleep that he would 
Penny would drop everything and loosen up. And Penny would hit the tray and it would wake him up, and he would just write down the first thing that he popped into his, popped into his mind. And that was the you know the, the start of many of his inventions. And I just think that you know tapping into that and understanding where you are. People get trapped. You know, I had this conversation with Lauren Turner yeah. here in the office because we were talking about the over and under tasks that we've set up okay. for our, all the clients and talking about how do we be creative and do things that are you know over and above what everyone would expect. I said over and under before, but over and above the task. Um, over and above what they would expect. I said, to, uh, I said to Lauren, now, when you're trying to come up with this task, don't think about it from the point of view of being the account or bookkeeper. Come mm -hmm. from, the, from the client's point of view and go, what could my bookkeeper or accountant give to me that would make me go, wow, well, I did not expect that. Yeah. Um, but it, she just said, it's really hard. I'm, just, I'm so trapped in everything we're doing throughout the day. And I said, well, it might not be here that you come up with an idea. You might be going for a walk. You might be at a cafe having breakfast with your husband and you know you might have an idea by looking around that cafe and then when you get to work on a Monday morning you say send an email to one of our cafe clients and say hey look I saw this in a cafe on the weekend and it was super interesting and uh, looked to be working pretty well just for your consideration yeah. that's something that a client would not normally expect from no. you know they might expect it from you right but they won't expect it from you know, the general bookkeeping team or tax team or whatever yeah. so it's super interesting where that creativity and, and stuff arises but very important yeah absolutely and, and you're right we all, we all do it differently you know i think about things under the shower but that's you know you're standing there for 10 minutes you know having a shave mm -hmm. and... who shaves in the shower me do you shave in the shower no <laughs> I would, I'd kill my, I'd come to work, there'd be blood yeah, everywhere, yeah. and I'd miss like half my face. <laughs> wrong because you're in the shower, it's all, your face is all wet and soft. It's actually not easier because you don't cut yourself or anything, it's, it's really simple. Yeah, but you go from the shower, beeline to the sink. That's it. No, is it for shaving cream or whatever yeah. on? And no, no, no. just put your shaving cream in the shower, the day, wash it off. Cool. <laughs> No, can't work. Yeah, you got to <laughs> can't work. I do not agree. Put your cream on, shave, wash your hair, washes it all off. No, 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 I can't break that habit, Matty. We can't break that. I was talking to my mate, Doug, or Kate. Who was it? Was it Doug or Kate? Do you want to dabble? Yeah, yeah. And uh, he said, how can you shave without looking in the mirror? I said, you don't need a mirror. I don't need a mirror to shave. You don't need a mirror, yeah. No, I have to have a mirror. Yeah. I've got to have a mirror. Why would you need a mirror? For four. Like... I look at the mirror. I think, even like, with the mirror, even with the mirror, I miss parts. <laughs> no, no. I get, I get out the door. I'm walking out the door. I'm rest, ready to go to work. I know exactly where to put them. I know my mirror. Put the razor. You just start up here. Yeah, but I, yeah, no, it just yeah. doesn't. And that's true. That's, 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 that's bad because I don't have a lot of patience. I'm going to work it out. I think you two do as good as a bash beer. You can't. You can't. <laughs> I've got my routine in the morning. That's uh, it's very specific. I have a routine. Yeah. Oh, well. Oh, not my route. <laughs> that is in Italy. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's true. And hopefully, she'll be back soon. Looking like looking like just after Christmas or January sometime. Oh, good. Cool. Okay. Which would be super exciting. Yeah. So that would be good. they will be very tired when I get to work for a month or so. <laughs> so guys, stay tuned and get get excited for uh, for the new Scotch clock. It's going to be every week. Okay, every week. And we're good. Can we change the day that we talk about? Well, I, we may or may not be live, okay, but it's going to go up every week. Yeah. Um, and it's going to be every Friday at 2. It'll either be an upload or it'll be live. Yeah. Um, it's going to have a great guest. It's going to have a much better and more detailed we're structure. Better, we're getting some better production equipment. Better production equipment. Yeah. Uh, we've sacked the production manager. Yeah. We're going to get a, a more experienced one. Don't celebrate. Yeah. Don't celebrate. And uh, look, I just, it, everything we're doing next year, we're just one-upping everything, yep. you know, and uh, we haven't done it for a long time. Everything's been the same and we've refined, but we're just going to double down on, on everything next year. So it's going to be awesome. Now guys, Talisker Storm, yeah, it is an absolute cracker. Uh, I, think it's, this is, I think it's the second oldest distillery in time. It's not on my cue cards, but it's uh, because the spring, spring bank here was 1828. Oh, yes, yeah, on the side. 1828. That's a bit younger than me. Yeah, me. yeah. But um, very cool. Guys, have a fantastic weekend. I'll be at the basketball tonight. That's going to be a cracker. I, I think. I do. Who's playing tonight? Uh, the Wildcats and another team. Yeah, okay. Cool. <laughs> Good to see you, Will. Good to see you, Will. Great, thank you. And we're doing.
a little bit better at the cricket today when we say many. No, 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 no. I haven't. I don't even pay attention. Well, now, it was so. three for hundred nine as I was driving in, so I think it's got off since then. Well, I checked hundred and fifty for six something. Oh, okay, like so they had a collapse again. Yeah, so we're yeah. stuffed. Yeah, it's cool. done. Well, on that note, see you later. See ya. <laughs>